So, naive T cells wander the body, leaving the blood, entering the lymph nodes, looking for a peptide that matches its antigen binding site. And if a naive T cell engages a matching peptide that's presented on an MHC molecule, and that engages strongly the T cell receptor complex, that's one signal that the naive T cell gets. The second signal, the CD28 molecule on the surface of naive T cell engages the B7 molecule on the surface of the professional antigen presenting cell. So these are two signals that are sent into the naive T cell in order to activate it. But remember, there's only one of this naive T cell with its unique antigen binding site. We need more of these. We need a clone army. So what we're going to do, what we're going to happen here is we're going to have clonal expansion of this T cell. And it involves a cytokine called IL-2. So we've activated this T cell, but there's, again, there's only one of it. So what happens is this T cell will turn on many genes in order to start T cell activation. One of the genes it turns on is IL-2, which is a cytokine. And that cytokine is released from activated T cells. And what the cytokine does is it induces T cell proliferation. And what it can do is it can bind to the IL-2 receptor on the surface of that same T cell. So this T cell is being told to undergo mitosis or proliferation, cell proliferation, or clonal expansion, if you will, by itself. It's telling itself to undergo um, proliferation. So this is almost the third signal that a T cell needs to get in order to not just activate, but then proliferate so that you can have this army of clones going out and, and doing whatever this T cell is going to do. So this is really the third signal that a cell T cell needs to get. And that signal can come from the cell itself. So this is known as autocrine signaling. When a cell releases a substance that comes back and binds to receptors on that cell, that's autocrine signaling. And IL-2 is a classical example of autocrine signaling. A T cell can release IL-2, which will come back and bind the IL-2 receptor on the surface of that T cell. That IL-2, with the cytokine, it can also go to neighboring T cells, and they might have T cell uh, IL-2 receptors on their surface, and so this naive uh, T cell that's now becoming activated can actually induce proliferation of nearby T cells. So this would be paracrine signaling. So activated T cells secrete IL-2, which can either induce autocrine signaling and their own proliferation, or paracrine signaling and neighboring T cell proliferation. So then you have armies of T cells that will go out and find matching peptides. Uh, it's important to understand uh, IL-2 signaling because immunosuppressive drugs actually work to inhibit signaling uh, in the cell. So this is actually covering both uh, t just T cell activation in general and T cell proliferation in general. So immunosuppressive drugs uh, you would give to a patient if they're um, suffering an autoimmune disorder, for example. Let's say their T cells accidentally uh, recognize self and you want to stop those T cells from activating. Or individuals who get organ donations. Sometimes they have to have their T cells suppressed so they do not attack the organ that they are being given. And we'll talk about organ donations in the last unit. But there are drugs that work to block T cell activation. Two of the most common drugs um, we'll talk about now. Cyclosporin is a compound that stops T cells from activating. And the way that works is that it binds to molecules that are involved in signaling from the T cell receptor into the nucleus. So in that last video we talked about T cell receptors being used to trigger T cell activation, phosphorylation of the ITAMs, the tyrosines and the zeta proteins that triggers signal transduction into the nucleus and that helps activate the T cell. So cyclosporin inhibits the signal that goes from the T cell receptor into the nucleus. So when T cells are exposed to cyclosporin, hey, great, they can match peptide all they want, but that signal's never gonna get to the nucleus, so that T cell will never become activated. A second very comp popular compound used to suppress the immune response is ramp uh, rapamycin. Rapamycin 
blocks the signal from the IL-2 receptor into the nucleus. So a T cell can match a peptide, CD28 molecule can engage B7, IL-2 can be made and released, but the signal from the IL-2 receptor never gets to the nucleus. So the T cell is activated, but there's a one of it. There's not a whole army of it. So there's no T cell proliferation going on. Um, and you don't fully have T cell activation. So these two compounds, cyclosporin and rapamycin, they both work different ways, but they both function to prevent T cells from activating and proliferating. So it's important to know how drugs work. And these two drugs work by inhibiting T cell activation and proliferation.